Judy Matheson appeared in some of the most skin-revealing horror movies of her time. What does not make any sense is the fact that she was recognized as a bold and independent woman with morals. But how come? Stay tuned and find out. But before we get into the video, make sure to subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below saying, I subscribed, and we'll do our best to personally reply to your comment. Number 8. Shakespeare plays allowed her to travel the whole world. Judy Matheson was born in 1945 in Thurrock, Essex, England. Although not much is known from her early years, it is reported that she started her career at the age of 22 in 1967. Her first ever professional debut was acting with the Bristol Old Vic Theatre Company. This allowed her to tour all across the United States, Canada, Europe, and Israel after she appeared in three Shakespeare plays. This theater tour included an impressive seasonal run on Broadway, giving Judy a lot of recognition. Number 7. Her first role was extremely dramatic and hard to act. She later decided to go for films and started with a couple of small roles in a few film and television productions. This continued after she finally got her breakout role in the 1969 psychological thriller, the exquisite cadaver. Beating out hundreds of other young actresses in auditions, Judy played the role of a desperate girl by the name of Esther Casino. She is entangled in a web of self-destruction after an ill-fated romance with a married man. Starring alongside an internationally diverse cast, Judy was considered the true centerpiece of the film, not only portraying Esther's descent into madness, gradually and boldly, but she also lives up to being exquisite. Judy even gives her character dimensions, as Esther has a natural talent for poetic expression and displays interest in astrology. She also indulges in the occasional attempt to take her own life. The exquisite cadaver was seen as a very important piece in the female empowerment movement. To consider that it was released in an era where feministic themes and anti-misogynistic undertones were not taken seriously. Number 6. Her next roles were in more adult-driven films. Soon Judy appeared in another significant role for her career in the now cult classic horror film The Crucible of Terror, where she acted opposite Mary Maud and Mike Raven. Her next big breaks were appearances of other classics, such as Lust for a Vampire and Twins of Evil, which were both released in the early 1970s. But even though her role in these Hammer horror films were not as large as her previous roles, they were considered pretty exciting by the general public and critics alike. In Twins of Evil, Judy acts at the beginning of the film in a dramatic and exhilarating credit sequence where her character is crucified at the stake after being accused of being a secret witch. And even though the scene sounded simple in theory, it was an extremely difficult scene to execute. The moment of being burned on screen can really be challenging to act and deliver without overacting, even though being burned on a stake in reality will get a person to overreact to the maximum. So finding a balance between suffering while being burned and not overacting is pretty hard for even the most experienced of actors. Number 5. Her Screams Made an Entire Film a Hit but Judy used her Shakespearean theater background to portray her intense fear and let out a touching scream that seemed as if it was coming out of the very depths of her soul. Even a confining, uncomfortable, and potentially dangerous setup with a real fire burning the logs in front of her and no stunt double, Judy gave an impressive act during her opening sequence of the film. So it makes sense that this scene with the actress has become so iconic and considered as a Hammer horror film memorable moment. In her second Hammer horror film, titled Lust for a Vampire, Judy plays a finishing school student named Amanda. Even though the film has somewhat of a very revealing title, the production was a piece of art and a Hammer classic. Its glorious Victorian-inspired gothic sets and glamorous period costumes made this film slightly better than Twins of Evil. In the movie, Judy uses her natural charisma to steal every frame of film despite her role not being as big as Ute Stengard's character. A fan-favorite scene is when she is being bitten by Marcella's vampire. 
What surprised Hammer enthusiasts is that once again, Judy managed to look exquisite, even while acting like a dying girl. Number four, Judy became the ultimate scream queen. Horror films seemed to work out for Judy and she decided to be the ultimate scream queen in horror films such as Flesh and Blood Show and The House That Vanished. Directed by the great Pete Walker, this hit horror film features a distinguished cast of British scream queens, magnificently filmed through Walker's unique artistic vision and certainly his great desire for breasts. These talented and beautiful actresses in their show-stopping sequences and their own isolated scenes. Number three, she shaped her characters to appear independent rather than objects of men. Judy's talents were not just limited to horror films. Apart from horror films, Judy also had a large collection of quality roles in British television productions such as The Sweeney, Corinthian Street, The Professionals, Blake Seven, Citizen Smith, and Crossroads. She often found herself playing strong-willed female characters who were intimidating, bold, and independent. Her most famous television roles came on two episodes of the long-running series Z Cars. She also starred in two cult comedy classics, Confessions of a Window Cleaner and Person progress, where Judy plays an elegant hooker, she undergoes a full-blown classic Hollywood glamour treatment. The hooker, who is a beautiful young lady by the name of Elvie, has succumbed to the jealous and overworked desperate housewife cliché. After striking up a conversation with the window cleaner, Elvie uses him to stage a bluff for her dishonest partner, Ronnie. The punchline of the whole sequence is when Ronnie is ironically revealed to be an androgynous looking woman, much to the audience's shock and surprise. Number two, Percy's Progress was one of the first films to talk about LGBT. Given that this film was made in the 1970s, long before LGBT rights started to be embraced by society, it makes the scene more interesting and memorable. Another very humorous moment is added to the sequence when Ronnie exclaims exclaims, Elvi, how could you do this to me? And with a man. Judy's time in the film is limited to only 10 minutes. Judy was good at dismantling the hyper-masculine environments that her characters were in. She used her natural feminine ways to inhibit misogyny, take ownership of her charm, and assert her control over men instead of being objectified by them. Even though Judy announced her retirement from films in 1980, her legacy of work stayed in circulation over the years and even gained her some new fans. So it was not long before she began attending conventions to meet fans and sign autographs. In 1990, Judy became a part of the launch team for British satellite broadcasting. She has also worked as a freelance announcer for Carlton Television and London Weekend Television. She decided to turn this into a career and stood with it until her late years. Number one, Judy hasn't retired despite her old age. During the coronavirus lockdown of 2020, Judy performed a monologue recorded for Bruised Sky Productions about the situation. She also took part in a live online reading of a new play by David Barry, The Lives of Frankie Abbott. Lately in July 2021, she took the part of Lady Lloyd George in an audio recording of a new play by A.D. Cooper, What Did You Do in the War, Mama? for Towton Productions. It also stars fellow Hammer Films actress Madeline Smith. Matheson's return to the big screen continues with an appearance in the feature-length documentary Keeping the British End Up. At 75, Judy is still working and doesn't have a plan to stop. Which one of these facts surprised you the most about the incredible Judy Matheson? Leave your comments below and check out the next video in this series.